It's barely been switched into television news at that point. And we got the word that uh, the transcontinental uh, service would be available by roughly September 1st, at least for experimental use. The State Department at the same time had booked the Japanese Peace Conference in the San Francisco, and obviously the State Department wanted that to get national coverage, if possible. So the four networks get together, and I very carefully say four, uh, because uh, there were at that time, including Dumont, four networks involved. So the four of us got together, I think at NBC one day, and decided, A, that we would make every attempt to cover it from beginning to end with television, uh, B, that uh, one of the four networks would be assigned to take over the full production responsibilities. And we decided to toss coins or uh, pick uh, numbers out of a hat or something. Uh, actually, uh, Dumont won. So Dumont would have had the responsibility, except they were totally unprepared for anything of that size. We had a joint uh, affiliate in San Francisco, the Westinghouse Station. And so Tom Gallery from Dumont said, obviously, he'd have to turn it over to their partner in San Francisco, CBS. So I suddenly became the producer of the, uh, of the whole affair. And I took it over and said, all right, I'll go with it. So I called San Francisco. I got the support of KPIX, who helped us put the show on the road out there. That's the local San Francisco CBS affiliate. Yeah, that's right. On the Westinghouse. And there was, so that part of it was satisfactory. I informed uh, CBS television that we were going to preempt five nights of commercial programming. And uh, I did it through Paley and Stanton, and they wanted the peace conference, so that was set. Uh, then I hiked out to San Francisco and started putting the production together. Uh, I picked Cronkite. I'd been waiting for an opportunity to use him because I thought he probably would be our single most important person in events of this sort. I was told that I'd have trouble getting him because uh, he was working for the Washington Station, which belonged 55% to the Washington Post and 45% to CBS. As a matter of fact, I was discouraged by one CBS executive from even trying but I went ahead anyway, and after a bit of warfare, succeeded in prying Cronkite loose. And he was at WTOP at that time? He was working, he was on the CBS payroll, but uh, assigned to the 11 o'clock news on WTOP. So he started going to work immediately, and it was not hard, well, not easy, I'm trying to say, because uh, you know, just simply pronouncing a, a name of a country nobody had heard of, L-A-O-S. Do you say Laos or Laos? And there are all kinds of pronunciations of that sort. You had to know the various countries you were involved in. You had to know what this peace conference was all about. Well, Cronkite went to work on it. I went out immediately to start working with KPIX in setting up the facilities. He came out a few days later, and when we went on the air, I think we came out with a, a pretty good show. Uh, there was one interesting problem in connection with it, which really shook me. Uh, I went down to uh, Washington for uh, a, a program with John Foster Dulles. 
a Republican, but he'd been selected by Truman to negotiate this whole peace conference. He did a half hour program for us and afterward, he agreed to sit with Ted Koop and me. Ted Koop was our Washington uh, Director of Public Affairs. And we talked about the peace conference and he said he was really worried because uh, it was conceivable that Gomiko at the very beginning, as soon as it was called to order, would demand the, the, the position uh, at the rostrum and to call the whole thing off. Gromyko being the Soviet Gromyko uh, being the Soviet delegate. representative. And he said that uh, it was conceivable that the Russians might kill this whole peace conference before it got started. Uh, this concerned me because uh, we expected a pure ceremony and now we had the possibility of an international war starting the opening night. Uh, I sat there in the control room in one of the boxes in the San Francisco Opera House and we had uh, told the State Department that we thought it was terribly important that they urge the mayor of San Francisco to take 30 to 40 seconds only and get the show on the road as fast as possible. Well, he did, and the, the baton went to Atchison, the permanent chairman. Atchison got the convention started. That's Dean Atchison, the Secretary Dean of State. Dean Atchison, Secretary of State. And once it was started, uh, we relaxed because now we knew that uh, it was on the way. And Gromyko could still cause trouble. Uh, we were uh, concerned about Gromyko and the Russians getting up and walking out at any point. They were dissatisfied. Uh, that's the way they were treating events at that time. It was just a plain walkout. So we had our cameras placed in positions where we always had one camera on Gromyko. And if he ever stood up, uh, that cameraman was instructed to say he's taking a walk. And everybody then had specific instructions as to where they would go, what they would do. We had one camera in the lobby on a tripod and one outside on a tripod on the street. And the one on the street was in a position to watch the front entrance, but also to swing around the corner and watch his side drive-in entrance. Well, for three nights, nothing happened. Gomeka was quiet, silent. Uh, on the third night, the signal came, he's taking a walk. Everybody snapped to attention. Uh, the uh, camera in the lobby Unfortunately, it was on a tripod, so you couldn't raise or lower it. When the crowd gathered, all you could see is a mass of heads. Uh, Gromyko uh, was there for a few minutes and disappeared. But in the meantime, the camera outside had gone to the side of the building and saw a limousine pull up to the uh, delegates' entrance and exit and it looked like a walkout. Well, after a few minutes, Gromyko very quietly, calmly, walked back in again, down the center court, to his seat. Now, we were uh, told after that, probably what happened is, we'd given more publicity to a man walking to the men's room than had ever been given previously. But we still don't know and I had made one serious mistake. As head of CBS News on the television side, I had no reporters. So I didn't send any reporters out there. So we had no reporters to track that story down and find out exactly what happened. But the others didn't do very well at it either, so we didn't lose too much. But well, it all ended uh, very calmly a couple of days later we went home with a job we thought well done. 